American Indian doctor. Uh, I, I am a storyteller. I like stories, and I like stories that have a message, a message to them. And certainly, uh, Standing Bear qualifies. I want to just start off with the big view, the helicopter view, uh, 500, uh, 500 miles up. And I want to start by saying, we need good stories. We, humanity, civilization, everybody in this room right now, we need good stories. I doubt if any of you have ever been to the southwest corner of France, but perhaps you will someday. If you are ever in the southwest corner of France, you should go to this series of caves hunkered down in the southwest quadrant of France called the Caves of Lescaux. If we were to be magically transported to southwest France right now and we're walking into the Caves of Lescaux, you would be able to see on the walls of these caves pictographs, pictographs that are still there today. And these pictographs tell the story of a very specific group of people at a very specific time, at a very specific place. And those pictographs on the walls of the Caves of Lesco in the southwest corner of France have been carbon dated back 17,400 years. They are the oldest known form of writing of storytelling in the world. We need those stories. We need the stories on the Caves of Lesco. We need the stories of Homer and Escheles and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Shakespeare, and Milton, and Mark Twain, and Ernest Hemingway, and uh, my favorite author, who I believe right now is the best writer America has, and that is a woman by the name of Louise Erdrich. She's an Ojibwe woman from Minneapolis. She uh, has a new book out, relatively new, called uh, La Rose. Uh, she also had a book out two years ago called the Roundhouse, which won the National Book Award, and she became the first American Indian woman in U.S. history to win the National Book Award. So we need all of these stories, because these stories from the Caves of Lasco 17,400 years ago to Louise Erdrich two years ago, those stories tell us who we are. By knowing who we were yesterday, we know who we are today, and they foreshadow who we are going to become tomorrow. So the stories are very important. So I want to talk a little bit about a story that I feel very passionate about, that I spent three years researching and writing, and it's a story about an American Indian man who was able to bring the United States government to its knees without ever firing a shot from his Winchester, without ever plucking a arrow from his quiver, without ever unsheathing his scalping knife. And his name, of course, was Chief Standing Bear. One of my favorite writers, and perhaps some of you have heard of him, if you haven't, you should read him, is a poet essayist from Kentucky. And his name is Wendell Berry. And Wendell Berry once wrote, if you don't know where you are, you don't know who you are. Now that's a very simple sentence. It's a very economical sentence. But the power that is packed inside that sentence if you don't know where you are, you don't know who you are, has a profound depth to it and a profound meaning. And you can all in this room, you can drill down and think about that and personalize it in your own terms. Think of the neighborhood that you grew up in, the friends that you had, the parents that you had, the place that that neighborhood was in, the church that you went to, the school you went to, all of those tributaries flowed into a river that determines who you are. It determines you are a product of place, every one of us in this room. And nobody, nobody understood that better than Chief Standing Bear and the Ponca people. They had spent several hundred years in this magnificent Niobrara River Valley. They had developed this deep cultural taproot that sunk down into that valley this beautiful homeland that maybe some of you have been up to, up in the northeast corner of Nebraska, where the Niobrara flows into the Missouri. It is as gorgeous now as it was 200 years ago when Lewis and Clark first climbed up on a bluff and looked out. And if you were to do that same uh, climb today, except for a telephone pole here and, uh, and a highway there, you would see the same thing 
that Lewis and Clark did. You can see the same thing that Standing Bear did. This lush, magnificent homeland with the river front through it. And the Ponca loved this homeland. They were able to transform this lush valley into carpets of wheat and corn and pumpkins and squash. And if it wasn't for the Ponca's ability to know where the deepest fishing holes were in the Niobrara and their agricultural skill at being able to transform this fertile valley into a, an abundant food supply, uh, if not for the Ponca, there were many, many white settlers who were coming across, pushing across the Mississippi and the Missouri in the post-Civil War era. Those people would have died. They would have starved because they had no idea how harsh Nebraska winters could be. And it was the Ponca people who kept them alive by sharing the bounty. And so they had come to love this homeland and to spiritually worship the seven sacred hills pocketing this area where the confluence of the Niagara and the Missouri occurs. And native people revere the places where they buried their dead. When the great Lakota war chief, Crazy Horse, once was asked, where are your lands? Crazy Horse's answer was, my lands are where my ancestors lie buried. That not only was true of Crazy Horse in the Lakota, but it was true of Standing Bear in the Ponca. They had their homeland. Not one U.S. Senate treaty said they owned this land, but two U.S. Senate treaties said they owned this land. A land that was blessed with great crops and these seven sacred hills where they buried their dead. So you can imagine one cold January day when they were all encamped in their winter village and a strange white man from of all places, the Upper East Side of New York, a man who knew nothing about Indians in general and nothing about the Ponca specifically, magically appeared in their winter camp and said, the great white father wants you to pack up as quickly as you can and move to Oklahoma.